around here. Um, this is a meeting for the benefit of you all that came out here tonight to be able to ask us questions that we can try to answer. And if we don't have the answer, we'll get back with you on an answer, or we'll make one up. <laughs> well, you better clear that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, typically what we do here is go through the list of people that signed up and the ones that actually had something that they wanted to speak about to allow them to speak, and then I would open it up, or we would open it up to anybody else that wanted to ask us something or make a comment. It doesn't have to be a question. It can be just a comment. Um, it looks to me like Cheryl Dowden was the first person that signed up. Oh, that figures. <laughs> and, uh, she, she wanted to address us about governing documents. So she's probably already going to have put me in a situation where I'll have to be, well, we'll have to get back to you on this. <laughs> okay. Um, Cheryl Dowden. Um, actually, I've changed my mind as to my question, so please bear with me. There were a couple of reports that the marketing subcommittee put out with recommendations and past history of marketing and a final report, and I cannot for the life of me recall the official names. Will the board be reviewing these reports? Mike, you know? Uh, yeah, I'm sure we will. Uh, some of them we've seen, not all of them. Uh -huh. um, we haven't seen anything from the marketing stuff. No. Okay. As a present, if we have one, it'll probably be a presentation. I don't know when that's going to happen. Okay, there's supposed to be a presentation um, by the SIMPAC chairperson, Nikki Choice, mm -hmm. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Do you, is she going to present that? Do you know what she's going to talk about? We don't know. Um, my assumption is that she's going to talk about specific the CMP advisory committee. You call it CMP. Everybody's got a you know some kind of acronym or something, don't we? Um, but the CMP advisory committee um, is what I think she's going to talk about is what they looked at and uh, and where they're headed. Is what not my comments. I'm, I'm going into it with an open mind to hear what she has to say because sure. I haven't attended those meetings, but they've been meeting now since I guess about June. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we, we asked the committees to, for instance, like GAC, which I'm a liaison to in the CMP, uh, to come forward to the board and, and talk about major things that they discussed. It doesn't mean that we, we're just getting an update, uh, and from that we may have some input that we give back to them, or we have maybe have some questions to ask. But we used to do more of this. The committees used to, a lot of the committees would come to the board and give an update. I think that needs to happen more in the future. I agree. Um, the reason I'm wondering is, as you know, the marketing subcommittee is under the umbrella of the CIMPAC, CMPAC, I call it CIMPAC. And um, I was at a meeting, at, at a marketing subcommittee meeting, and Nikki, um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but basically, and please forgive me for paraphrasing this because I can't remember exactly what she said, and I'm getting old, so. Um, but it was basically said by Nikki that if the marketing subcommittee did not tow the line as far in regards to these reports, that she would have no choice but to disband the marketing subcommittee. And then um, Ray Lehman, who is on SIMPAC now, and he, he was on the, and he is on the marketing subcommittee also, said that that was because Gadotti was in the report and it wasn't favorable. Do you know anything about that? No. When we, have, know? we haven't seen the reports. <coughs> not heard anything. We have not been told anything about the reports. When will these reports be made public? I don't know. I don't know if they'll ever even release them. I, I don't know what they're discussing. They, they, 
we never released the um, ad hoc financial committee. Why was that? I have no idea. Well, sometimes you get into these committees and ideas come out and they're just, uh, <coughs> and sometimes they're just thrown out. You know, I, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen in this, but I don't know. I, I haven't attended any of those meetings lately, so. Um, and maybe we'll have we'll something about it tomorrow. I haven't heard anything I don't yet. Think so. <coughs> well, no. Okay. Um, I don't see Sherry. Oh, there she is. is. Sorry. I'm hiding. You were hiding. I thought I saw you earlier, and then I couldn't see. Sherry Nelson would like to ask us about commercial property. So my question is in regards to the commercial properties inside the village. So many of them, especially on the west side, have become seriously dis in serious disrepair. Uh, specifically, those buildings like over by El Himidor, mm -hmm. some of those the roofs are caving in on. They're in horrible shape. And we're coming up here now with our 50th anniversary, going to have dignitaries coming in, having lots of other people. And how are we allowing our commercial properties to continue to be in such disrepair? Does the board have any, or our compliance department have any control over that? Commercial property is completely different than anything else. The only thing we collect on commercial property is the assessment. You look at, look at the Balboa Marina. I can't tell you how many people have complained to me about that, that mobile home there. They pay the fine every month. And we can't do anything else. We don't own the property and, and uh, we don't own the commercial entity. So how is that different than a homeowner when the compliance officers can come and tell us? The homeowner is under the property owners association. Commercial property was controlled by Cooper for many years and I, he sold. So the commercial property is not under the POA? Well, it's under. If they pay your dues every yeah, time, they're part of the No, they pay the assessment is what they pay. Now, they have to pay the assessment. But commercial property is, we've never been able to tell as far from what I remember in the six years I've been on the board. Uh, because I know what you're talking about. I've complained about that before. That is owned by, uh, well, I know who it's owned yeah, by. It's owned by yeah. uh, we've talked to them. Uh, but we cannot force them to do anything. Can the fire department go in and say, hey, this is fire hazard, you either take care of it, or well, it's, it's uninhabitable, so I don't know if the fire department would have any control. Well, that, that is, you know, that is, it's almost the same as the Townhouse Association. We have no control, really, over the Townhouse Association. They have their own declarations, they have their own covenants. Thank you. What about that? The new 119 page or whatever it's turned out to be now, protective covenants. Is I know that that um, discusses commercial property to a great degree. Is that not covered in that? That do you know, Mike? I don't. I don't think so. Uh, nothing's been finalized. I know that we've had a lot of discussions about the piece of property, the pieces, because it's not just one. Right. In that area there. Uh, by El Himador, is what you referred to. Um, I know that we've had a lot of discussions about that, um, and that um, I know that Leslie has met with the owner on a new number of occasions, and... Um, All we can do is ask. We can't yeah, I mean, say do it. So if, in the future, <clears throat> We do build a town center. How is that going to be different than these commercial properties that will just be allowed to run down? Well, if, if, number one, there's no talk of us building a town center yes. at this point in time. That isn't going to happen in my lifetime. Of course, I hope I live a number more years. But <laughs> I, don't, I, don't think it gonna, I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime either. But that's neither beside the point. I mean, we're moving towards bricks and we're moving away from bricks and mortar right. into everything into an online world is how I would view it right now. But um, you know, Arkansas has some really strange real estate laws. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that short of, uh, at this point in time, that short of entering another litigious situation, <coughs> we've, we've just about exhausted every avenue we could, short of that. And... Um, That's probably very well put. Because it will have to be a litigious situation. The, when this thing, when it was broken apart, and I wouldn't, I don't know about all that, it, it was a... Cooper had control over things until about 2009 before he gave them up. But the commercial property, he owned all that and sold a lot of it. Uh, and, and the POA, the only, the, only thing, the only thing the POA does is collect the assessments on it. And their, their rights are different than a normal That's homeowner, right? Okay. As far as privileges and that sort of thing go, it's not like with a homeowner that you can go in and take out, take away their privileges because that doesn't mean anything to them. They could care less. They've got other properties that they have the privileges on, so they could care less. It, it's been discussed many okay. times. And uh, fines have been assessed. assessed. Fines have been paid. Mm -hmm. Well, how can you assess fines if you don't have any control over the property? Well, that's the only control well, you have, that's right? the only control we have is fine. But you, 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 you can find somebody and say, hey, you know, clean. I mean, the steps are falling down. So you go across from the El Hemador parking lot mm -hmm. and where the old laundromat used to be, and there's a set of steps going up to that level of the parking lot. I don't think I would walk on those steps. I'd go around and walk up the asphalt driveway. Right. Because those steps are like this, and the railing is all, I mean, you know, they're taking some risk there because it's their liability if they own that. But, um, how much are the fines? They how vary. Long, how they hard they vary. Triple or quadruple well, or that's, the, you know, um, that would be a great question to be posed to the appeals committee. And, um, you know, if you make the fines high enough that it would yeah, be cheaper it, for them to tear the buildings down or repair the buildings, they might take a real serious and, look and at Again, you have to understand some of the things that aren't, he's right, Arkansas is different on some oh, things. I'm right. I'm yeah. just saying, right. who assesses the fines? Uh, the POA assesses well, the fines, but if they pay it. Yeah, but what I'm saying is if you assess them $500 a month and that $500 goes to $2,500 a month, they might start Well, say, I think they'll think you can make some valid points. You know, they might mm -hmm. step back and say, hey, we might want to do something about this. Is there anything within the assessment rules that says that if, if they don't meet the, if they pay the fines up to a certain length of time and don't fix the property, then the POA can, can take the property back? You know, you can't take the property back. Okay. It was never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was always Cooper's. Right. It's, it's, well, I mean, if I don't take care of my house, yeah, and I I don't maintain my my home, the POA can't. I mean, I suppose they can put a lien on it, but that, they that's but well, they can't take it, and that lien yeah, would sit there not until. Worth it. Paper's written on. It's not exactly in the state of. And it, I know from being the liaison to the Townhouse Association um, <clears throat> uh, committee that or their board, um, and attending their meetings, they've got a situation where they've got a few townhouses that don't pay their dues, mm -hmm. and they've got uh, they've gone the lien route, and then they've gone a different route. But basically, they're not going to get their money. Right. until the person sells that place. And okay. that's probably not going to happen until they pass away. What about insurance liability angle as far as, you know, it's out in public and if someone, I mean, can you contact their insurance company and say, hey, you know, they've got a huge liability here. It's on, these stairs are used by public and look at them or the roof there, is collapsing yeah, you and into, you can get you into get in, it. You get into the privacy laws and there's yeah. all kinds of things you get into yeah. there. You know, How about calling attorney? the board of board of health or uh, county building commissioner well, as a detriment? Now, now, now we've stepped in also into that is strictly an operations issue, and the board doesn't have any control over operations. So a private citizen can call it in, though, well, and say, I mean, people are breathing all the mold. 
Because the place is full of mold. It's, yeah, you can see it hanging off the roofs. And it's across the street from uh, a restaurant. A restaurant. A restaurant. Yeah, a restaurant and uh, like condos, whatever they are. And there's kids there breathing that stuff. <clears throat> Plus, everybody's breathing it. It blows in the wind. Perhaps this should be considered as part of our CEO's goals next year. It ties in with many things that are her goals this year. They should be able to condemn it. <laughs> well, that I gets know they've condemned other properties. Yeah. That gets into lawsuits. And yeah, in order to do a condemnation, you're going to have to go through the legal entity. Yeah. The building inspector can do it. Are we at the limit of our lawsuits with our... <laughs> no, 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 I'm sure we do. No, no, the, the clock is continuing, you, you know. It's, e it's easy to say that we get in, we can sue somebody, but uh, I happen to know the owner of that owns several buildings in that area. Uh, well, does the, we owner, does the owner of those buildings also own some retail businesses as well that we are all supporting? And this is the thanks we get for the support of their retail business. Well, the liquor store. And he, he, he shows the station. station. Oh, I mean, it's well, an insult. No, it's, it's an absolute mean, slap in the, the face store. insult <laughs> that they have allowed It's that not property. like he has. I've been talking to him. No, we don't I'm like just, you. I'm just <laughs> suggesting that maybe a little less patronage of their businesses. I don't want to hurt El Himidor. I don't want to hurt... I kind of like where Annie is leading us that, you know, <coughs> cleaning up the commercial property could be a goal. A goal. Yeah, that's a good idea. I don't know what we're going to be able to do with the whole Governance committee. Joe. Where did Joe go? Was that your Joe that wanted to ask about the governance committee? Was that you? I'd like to have one now. You pass on that? <laughs> Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's not here. She was to be determined anyway. Uh, Melinda told me to pass her. Um, Ernest Armentrout. Melinda. Is Melinda? No, no Melinda. my Melinda. Out okay. here. Oh, okay. You told me just observe. Now, well, I was going to, but now I have a question. Okay, well, we'll get to you. Thank you. Is <laughs> Ernest Armitrout here? His question was the accountability of use of funds for the new surcharge on Gaunt. That new surcharge, uh, to my understanding, is to be collected and put into a reserve account for Gaunt course capital needs period and you know it's a point of sale click on the cash register easily tracked yes, easily audited it's strictly for the golf course it's not for the balboa club or anything it is yeah, you, 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 the golf course i'm i'm not a hundred percent expert on sales tax law in the state of arkansas or any other state at this point in time in my life. <laughs> at one time I knew Illinois real well. But uh, um, you yeah, sales tax has my husband's paying. The first time he played it. golf, he bought one of he bought one of the thousand dollar things and they made him pay the two dollars and fifty cents separate. They said they couldn't take that off the thousand and he paid the two fifty in the tax or whatever. Well then he talked to several people and they said no, they can take it off that thousand. So he's played since and they did take the two dollars and fifty cents off the thousand. Okay. But they were trying well, to I'm sure there were some growing pains and it's new and you know, and it, it, you know, it, it takes time to get you know, you've got to get that communicated from this pro shop to this pro shop to this pro shop. Yeah, but right. you know, I'm assuming it was different courses. So okay, that took care of that. <laughs> Yes. Uh, is this free? Is is this fee for each golf course? In other words, if you pay it at Balboa, it goes to Balboa. If you pay it at Isabel, it goes to Isabel. No. No. Okay, it just goes, goes to all the golf. Pot. <coughs> goes into one pot. Okay. We are 50 years old, and all of our golf courses eventually are going to need the same thing. So, future boards are going to have to figure out a way. 
well, my take on it is this with the golf courses. You know, it used to be a time, I've been a golfer for a couple of years now, and it used to be a time in America where you'd go play a golf course and it could be 50, 60 years old. And not a whole lot done to it, it's still a pretty good track. And, you know, we were building golf courses. <coughs> And this is strictly my take, my opinion. This is, I'm speaking for Diana Podolos, not anybody else here. Um, and, and we were building golf courses left and right in this country, <coughs> you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, the golf course industry kind of started, new, new course building started slowing down rapidly in the recession after 9-11. Very, I mean, it just went bam, hit a hit a brick wall, and in fact, golf courses started closing in great numbers, especially places like Myrtle Beach. Uh, they've gone from like 120 golf courses down to about 80, I think. Um, and you, but yet you still have an industry. You've got a golf course design industry. You've got a lot of schools to teach people how to design golf courses. You've got schools to teach people how to maintain golf courses. So you have all these people coming out into the workforce. You better be able to find a job for them. So now, in the last 20 years, if you round it off, 2001 to 2020, <coughs> um, now we've had to create a demand for the supply of people that needs jobs. So now the USGA's recommendations and standards have changed. And now, you know, we, we can't live with the shrink. A green will shrink over time. It's, it's kind of hard to figure out that you've got a physical green and that over time it's going to shrink. But it does because of the way the grass grows around it and the mowing and that sort of thing. And so you have less, quote, putting surface. Now they feel that you need to just dig that thing up all the way from the base and start all over with it. And they're really finicky. Greens are very finicky in that they have to have very, very strict standards of soil composition. And you can take green material from golf course A, 50 miles away from here, as long as it's in the same grow region, and keep that all sterile and keep it all together, and truck that 50 miles down the road and build a new green with it. But you better not mix green from the soil from the seventh hole and with soil from the fifth hole, or you probably won't get a green that's going to last but the grass is going to grow, and it's going to hold up. Weird deal, but that's the way it works. But anyway, so now we have the situation of we never thought in the past, we thought we built these golf courses, and they're built. And once they're built, all you've got to do is maintain them. Well, now it appears that not only do we need to maintain them, but in many cases, we need to rebuild them. And while it may have cost a few hundred thousand to a million to put one in. That was in that year's 1980-something for Balboa Golf Course dollar to now fixing the problems, you're looking at four million. And we don't have the wherewithal, in my opinion, to go that route with a complete rebuild. <laughs> but yet we've got problems there that have to be addressed and have to be fixed. We've got some greens that need to be rebuilt. Do all 18 of them need to be rebuilt? I don't think so. I'm not convinced they of that. Don't. But the golf industry is saying, yes, they do. There, well, there may be two that I know for sure have to be redone because the substructure is already starting to give way. But the, one of the problems, for instance, on Balboa, uh, and I don't know, Mr. Cooper was brilliant as far as I'm concerned what he did here. But he, he wanted to sell homes. Well, you sell homes when you have lakes and you have golf courses. And he put some of these golf courses together pretty quick. 
And to do that, he probably cut uh, steps that he shouldn't have because one of the biggest issues we have with Balboa, and we've had it for a long time, is the irrigation on it. When that irrigation was done, it was probably 30 years ago, maybe longer, and it needs to be replaced, and that's, that's costly. It's also costly today. Uh, I don't know if you see the sprinkler heads, but those things uh, cost a lot, and we don't, we didn't have the proper ones in in certain spots, and the uh, uh, golf cart, uh, the trail trails. Need but to you see, there good. that it's a the Balboa Golf Course is a perfect example of kicking it down, kicking the can down the road, and now we got a budget this year that doesn't even, there's no bend room in there to come up with some money without cutting it someplace else to even start working on this project. And that's a concern for all of us. But Diana, does all of these golf courses have to be registered with the USGA? Can we not have well, it isn't two or three that I are? probably oversimplified simplified that when I was talking about my opinion and, and my outlook, my take on this. It's not a matter of them being registered with the USGA and recognizes that. It's just that those are the, quote, industry standards. Right. And... Um, I mean, if you own tournaments, you got to be on um, yeah. Yeah. But can we not maybe have two or three that are tournament ready or tournament qualified or whatever, and then have the two or three that maybe are just for the villagers? Okay, well, we don't want to turn you don't want to turn a golf course into what I call a goat pasture. Yeah. You know, right. as a golfer, and I don't play as much as I used to. In fact, I play very little golf anymore. But. Um, there are certain things that just absolutely have to be done. Right. And the unfortunate thing is, is that we didn't do any of those things for a number of years, and now we're going to start. We 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 we're going to start to the point where we're going to have. We've got to do these things at Balboa, and then next in line will be Ponce. Yes, uh, Coronado would be as far as age would be would be coming in there the same time. That's a golf course that we could maybe <coughs> relax our standards a little bit because of the nature of that it's a par three, par four mm -hmm. executive type golf course that maybe we could bypass doing something there. But these are all issues that are going to be facing the boards from now until the next 20 years. Right. I mean, if the USGA doesn't cost that much to make it worthwhile to even look at, <coughs> you want to be able to have turn. Sometimes we have two or three tournaments going on at the same time. We we have tournaments for members. We have tournaments for uh, businesses, uh, groups from the outside that want to come in and have tournaments. So it just depends. Well, and the other thing you want to keep in mind is that every time you let one of these fixes go and push it down the road. You jack up your everyday, day-to-day -day maintenance costs, right? Because you create more time in taking care of the the mowing and course preparation and that sort of thing, and um, so you start to bite your nose to spite your face on where golf courses are concerned. Linda, how about looking at it from a more packed practical view and what's more important than uh, remodeling the building as Balboa is sort of like a non-traditional building and, and allowing the people to enjoy it inside for a determined amount of time and then rebuilding the course later on when you have the money because it was very clear that we did not have the money to rebuild the building or tear it down or and the course at the same time so why should the village be subjected to that debt when nobody has the money to pay for it we will figure out a way to yeah well i think i think you 
you may there again have another fair statement to make. But what, what you need to realize is that these decisions will be made. The Balboa Clubhouse decision will not be made by the people that are sitting on this board right now. There's no way we're going to come to a decision between now and April 15th. We're not even talking about it. It's not even on the calendar to be talked about. And this just a, it's a challenge that is always going to, it's going to face the board of directors until a decision has been made. And we, at some point in time, we have to pull that plug and make that decision. we got to turn on the switch one way or the other. Let me just say one thing. That golf course is a very popular golf course. There's a heck of a lot more members that use that course than use that clubhouse. And I have played that course. Well, I'm saying, though, I mean, the, the, she's well, kind of right about the clubhouse. I, to me, the course needs to be fixed. It, used to, it was the number one course in the village for several years, and it could very well be again once it's fixed. The other situation that you have to think about, too, where that, that the property is concerned, the Balboa property, and I'm going to include Clubhouse Golf Course when I say Balboa property, is that surrounding that, you do have a lot of lots that um, are undeveloped. Now, whether or not they're some of them are paying assessments, some of them are not paying assessments. I mean, they're in that mix, just like you can pick any area in the village and say there's a mix. But there's an opportunity there because it's a central location. It's pretty central, north, south, east, west, within the village. So we have to make decisions for the Balboa property. And, and, and some people are going to like the decision, and some people are not going to like the decision just like every other decision that the board makes in, involving a, a large amount of money. But once again, I'm speaking for myself here, that clubhouse and the looks of that clubhouse and to just sit it, let it sit there and continue to deteriorate is a very sad proposition in my mind. So, Cheryl. Um, mm. <coughs> And I understand this is not your fault, this is not the board's fault, it's not management's fault, it's not anybody's fault. But what I'm hearing, and Cindy Erickson has said that the board is going to have to start talking about assessments, um, whether they be special assessments or monthly assessment increases. And I understand I'm not accusing you of anything, and I understand you're in a hard place, but that's what it sounds like is going to happen here, because it sounds like <coughs> we are in trouble with the golf courses. It's not just the it's golf just courses. We have 11,000 non-performing lots. Non-performing. They do not pay a monthly assessment. Believe it or not, now it never happened all at the same time, but at one time, every lot paid their assessment. Granted, you know, there's a lot of things <coughs> into, that, into that mix. But because of our revenue structure, which is primarily based upon assessments, and you have 11,000 of the lots not, not participating, they're not helping to pay the load around here. Um, well, the lots without rooftops aren't helping much either. Well, they're included in the 11,000. I mean, you know, but that's the lots without rooftops. That's 11,000 non-performing lots. We only oh, have okay. two. <laughs> we only have, I think we only, at, the, at year end, I, I, can't, I read the report today, I think we only have one house <coughs> that's delineated. How many lots do we have that do not pay assessments? 11,000 non-performing lots. What I'm talking about are people who <coughs> own lots but don't have rooftops on them. But <coughs> their assessment, which is half the I couldn't rooftop. hear you. Okay. Yes, they are. They're paying their assessments. They're paying their assessments. Okay. Those aren't part of the 11,000. Those aren't part of the 11,000. I'm talking about 11,000 okay. are, okay. are not, not paying. Okay. And then and we have other lots that pay. And we have how many lots that don't have rooftops that are paying assessments? Do you know? About 12. About 12,000. 
Because we had yeah. something like we had something like 20, 26, 000 acres, yeah. and we had we had like thirty four thousand lots. Yeah, and then you've got then you've got the lots that don't have houses on them. You get about eighty nine hundred lots that I mean I could back into this number here. Yeah. Nine from thirty four is twenty three, right? Yeah. Eleven off of that. See is what what happened? Yeah. Part of what happened? Twenty five, and then you've got eleven, so you've got fourteen thousand. I told, this, I told this story before, but I'll tell it again. I'm 50 years old. I had a lady call me from Texas, and uh, she was in a assisted living. And she said, sir, I'm never going to move up to Hot Springs. And I own a lot, and I can't afford to pay it anymore. And uh, so I sent her over to the POA, and I'm sure we took care of it for her. But there's a lot of people like that. They bought lots, they were going to move, mm -hmm. and then, to me, the worst real estate recession I ever saw hit us. And when you lose half or more of the value in your own, there's a lot of people that just decided not to move, and I know quite a few in the Texas area that did. They couldn't afford to sell their home and move because they were going to use the money they were going to make off that home to build here and still have some left over for their retirement and it didn't happen. And then by the time that the housing market recovered, they were entrenched in their life yeah. and didn't change. You know, we've had a real societal shift too. Okay. Um, people are aging in place. Um, I mean, that's all part of the marketing plan of who do we market to. And uh, looks to me like from what I've read in the marketing plan that, that um, we're talking about now, I mean, going to be a big push for the military market. Because those pe people who haven't put down roots, people that have been, you know, moved around a lot in their working careers are more apt to move in their retirement year than somebody that's lived in the same town, the same place for 30 years. Well, that's not just military. Though. And that's not just military. No, my husband and I both had careers and we've moved, I bet, 25 times. But what happened is you had, when you had, well, we had a, we had a, uh, um, the 2001 recession and then we had the 2008 recession. I don't know how long you've been here, but what happened in the course of that time is that a lot of people have, they, they won't move with the corporation now. They'll just change jobs rather than move because he's got a job <coughs> here or she's got a job here and it affects a double income situation and they turn down the moves mm -hmm. and, and corporations don't move as people as much as they used to 20, 30 years ago either because of the expense of moving them. You pretty much have to be at an upper level in the corporation for the company to pay for your move. Right. They may shut down their operations, and if you want a job in the new place, mm -hmm. you, you can, we'll give you a job, but you've got to get yourself there. You've got to sell your home, and you've got to pay for all that. I mean, it's, it's, the world has changed. And those of us that have been retired, I've been retired, well, I've been here in the village for 16 years now. And uh, I mean, it, 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 the corporate world is different. We moved here eight years ago. And my husband still works, but he works from home. Yeah. And, that, and that's, a, that's, that's, that's a market. Yeah. There's, there's a market, too. There's a market, too. But we, there's, you know, with everything that there's a caveat, there's some, I mean, there's some caveat to it because we have a broadband issue. Mike's got a meeting coming up on that. Um, it's hard to get company. I mean, I don't have broadband on my street that I live in. I live in a 21-year-old house. Well, we just got AT&T about four months ago. Yeah. We were on DSL until then. And we probably wouldn't have that because we're the only house on our street. But we're across the street from Balboa, on the other side of Balboa. Broadband is extremely critical to us because I do think we have a lot of built-in employees sitting right here who, who would work from home if we had it. But again, it, it, nothing happens overnight. Well, and you won't attract the younger crowd. 
Yeah. It's not, it's not a matter of being younger crowd. I'm saying the people sitting in this oh, room. I see, but I'm talking like my son and daughter-in-law are going to retire to Arkansas. They love it here. But you would never be able to get them to buy any place that does not have well, they're, they're gonna, they're, they're, That's going to be their primary question. I mean, when we moved down here, we were asking, do you, does this place have cable TV? Because at that time, you had houses that, I mean, I don't have cable TV. And what I did with the second house is beyond, I fell in love with the house and didn't think about some of the uh, utilities of it. But uh, well, we didn't even think about because we moved from Houston. Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, if everyone has high-speed internet. Why do you mean we don't have high-speed internet here? Mm -hmm. And we didn't ask. Well, big surprise. Yeah. But it's not just here. Arkansas, as a state, it's, it's, has it's, an issue and with those types of things. Okay, but my, Arkansas, my yeah. sister and brother-in-law yeah. live in yeah. Oklahoma, and they have high-speed internet. But it's rural America, and we are, this is a rural community. They live in Oklahoma, Arkansas. <laughs> oh There's 160 people in Oklahoma. It's not so much that, though, as it is, are they dealing with the mountain terrain? Yeah, are they dealing with the topography? No, it's so we talked about, I heard, on the news, I heard on the news about a town in Kentucky that they went out and bought a donkey. The town bought a donkey so that they could use the old-fashioned ways of digging through the rock and the... the, the and everything to lay that cable. And the townspeople did it themselves. Well, I don't think we villagers are going to go out there and get us a donkey and lay that cable. Be me. But, uh, I mean, it, it, there again, it's another challenge. And it's, I mean, it's, it's going to be ongoing for the next several years. Yeah, I mean, it will get solved because the governor is behind it, which is good. And the state has a lot of money. Yeah, and there's, and there's potentially some things available that would help us out very much in it. So. I, I'm very optimistic about us reaching that goal in the next couple of years, and I think it's going to be important because, again, this is the lowest I've seen people from a work standpoint. I mean, we, we don't have any unemployment. I always figured if you have 2% unemployment, you got 2% that are never going to work anyway because they don't want to. So trying to find people to work even is even difficult in this environment today. I, I've never... I think I think they said the last time was in the fifties we had this low and heck I was in high school. I don't even remember those days. But yeah, well, it's, it's something a, else these days. It's an economic anomaly. I also heard today that the real estate market for young people is the strongest it's been in several years. And uh, because the young people are working and getting good jobs, they're moving out of their what he said was their parents' home and looking for places to live, which is great. Yeah. Are we done with questions, Diana? Or well, you didn't. I didn't sign up for a question. No, no, I'm just. If, if the, the questions are done, I'll. I, I've got it. Yeah. Well, you had something on the governing on the on the governing documents and bylaws. I do, but I just wanted to reference that last one on the lots themselves, the eleven thousand lots, and some people were selling, not selling, but giving up their amenity rights to their lots that they owned for like two hundred dollars. I don't know what it was. It was in the paper. It was in the voice yeah, at one that. time. Yes, you can do that, but why wouldn't the void no, why wouldn't the POA then turn around and put a certain number of lots up for sale and for the amenity rights as to one person and then they would have those people Buying that lot would have to pay the taxes and everything. We've tried. Else. We've, we've tried the selling of um, memberships, if you will, and and I mean, we've tried a lot of different things there, and the push right now um, is that we're going to try to sell lots for the purposes of people building a home. I can't remember off the top of my head what that means to us in terms of first year revenue, but um, if you bring in a couple of offers here, because always when you first come here you just all oh, move like every day, and um, spend a lot more money playing golf, and then we have raised substantially our permitting fees and that sort of thing, so I mean, it, it is a significant value to us to sell a lot that gets converted to a house at this point in time versus just selling 
a lot. And there are a lot of people out there that own lots that do sell the amenity rights and they pay the fee to, to get those amenities transferred over. But generally, those lots are not part of the pool that are not performing. The people are already paying the dues on them because they wouldn't want to have to pay the back dues in order to convert that over to an amenity situation. Are there plans to do similar things that is, is it called Siega? The Siega neighborhood? Yeah, I mean, to me, that makes total sense to build out neighborhoods. If you've got a group of lots, bring in a, someone like Renaissance who is willing to do, they know what they're doing on building and selling and getting these homes built and selling them. Absolutely. That, that I mean, to me, it. that makes total sense. I thought that was a great idea. That, it's was, not... that, was, a, that's, that was a goal of the staff to do that. It actually started uh, the prior year. It actually started when um, David Twiggs was our CEO, and a gentleman by the name of Jay Allen uh, went to David and bought some lots, and his lot purchases are over in the Glazy Po area because Jay is, is betting that that area will become a lot more, um, I have more than looking for, desirable. attractive, desirable with the um, coming of the bypass. Because well, and the bypass and the fact that Walmart it's a quick way to Walmart, I think. It's, it is a quick way to, but the bypass coming is really what he's betting on because when that connection of Martin Luther King Drive comes down to the intersection of 5 and 7, and I don't know if you've seen, but it'll be a roundabout yeah. to get onto the thing, and then that section of the oh, expressway will still be two lanes. It won't be a four-lane expressway the way it is in Hot Springs, but it will be two lanes until it connects up to the four-lane. But it still will be no stoplights, no, I mean, no stop signs. We don't have stop lights. Well, if you go through town, you've got stop lights. But anyway, that it will actually take less time to go from the Glazy Po area here and go into work at CHI St. Vincent than it would if you lived on like say the Lake Hamilton side, or the Lakeside School District yeah. side, that area of yeah. Hot Springs, take less time. And he's built some very nice homes out there, and he does them um, on spec, and he builds like a house and sells it, and then he builds another one. And he's, I don't know how many, I mean he's bought, he bought 20, 25 lots from us to do that, and he's probably built 10 houses so far. So, I mean, it is happening, and I know about, and, and people that drive around, you know of neighborhoods that were laid out by right. Cooper that right now they're not serviced, the utilities aren't there, there's no water or electricity run into them, the roads were done maybe one pass at them, which they'd have to be redone, but if you could find developers that came in here to do that, that's a win-win. Yeah, I agree. Let me let me answer one thing, and I'll come back to you, ma'am. Uh, on the uh, Renaissance homes, though they're smaller, and one of the reasons they're smaller is we have an awful lot of what I will call single spouses living in big homes that want to downsize. So I, I think I'll, I'm not going to say all of them because it won't be that way, but some of those are going to be bought up by people who just want to downsize, get into something smaller, and which I don't blame them for. And uh, yeah, that means we'll have homes on the market, which we don't have a lot of right now. I, I, believe it or not, Hot Springs is pretty, uh, we're pretty well known through some of the packages that we're selling. Um, we got a lot of people that are, that are showing an interest that we didn't have in the, in the past. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to touch on something Diana said about raising the permit fees. I brought this up at the last Let's Talk, and I was told that it was just 
up to what our cost was now. And I looked at fees in Benton, I looked at fees in Hot Springs, <clears throat> and I don't remember what the specific items were, but it was bigger items like grinders, and which I don't even know what that is, sorry. <laughs> well, that takes care of your waste coming out of your house. <laughs> well, yeah, I was kind of figuring that, but I didn't know until I got here, and I'm not yeah. sure I know where it is. And, anyway. and if you were comparing it to another city, it would be their sewer system. Okay. Well, the terminology that they were using mm -hmm. was the same as the terminology I found in our fees. And our fees were like double what theirs were. Why would that be? If you want to encourage building, you go as easy as you can on the fees. Now if you want to discourage it, you double them or triple them. Well, what fees are we talking about? Because we, we, build, we build something on a bi-monthly basis, not a monthly basis. You're talking about no, no permitting for <coughs> <coughs> when you want to build a house? house. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And that has gone, I think, from 2008 to uh, maybe even before that. Let's just say, maybe I'm wrong on the 2008. Maybe it's like 2006. Okay. That has gone from six grand to 12 grand in the last 14 years. I don't recall now whether last month I looked at history on our fees. But I know for sure that the current fees that I was looking at were, some of them were double what Benton and Hot Springs were mm -hmm. charging for their permits. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to look at the cities because they got different things than we do. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, I wish I could answer your question, because but I can't because I haven't looked at Hot Springs and Benton. But mm -hmm. they are cities and we are not. Mm -hmm. uh, right. But I'm just saying, did we really look at that before we? Increase I'm sure we did. We, we, we have a lot of people that look at fees for houses, believe me. Because uh, some of those are charged to the builder, too. Uh, well, they're charged to the builder, Mike, but inherently the, 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 buy, the, the person buying the house is paying that. Oh, I know. You know, it's not the builder and they're paying it. I mean, the builder may be paying it up front, but it, it goes into the cost of the home. Which is, in my mind, why? Uh, well, we did. We had a we had a surge at year end for new home permits because surprise, they surprise, were yeah. they never because that you no, know, because well, Ciego bought them. Yeah. Then whether or not you know because of the cost of how much they're going up, January one. So it's a valid point. It's a valid point. I mean. You, you reach a point, <coughs> supply and demand determines price. Always has and always will. True. And the cost of, of providing something doesn't have any bearing on price in the real world, in a capitalistic society. Yeah, that's true, but as I yeah. said, if but you want to yeah, encourage so, so, something, you know, if they're you wanting to get to the 125 rooftops a year, I don't know how much more they can keep raising it. Uh, Maxine, I had a conversation with Jason Temple, okay. who was the one who did all of the research. And bottom line, he said, we're losing our shirt every time we have to put in a grinder and a road and everything. We're getting killed. We have to raise just to break even. Okay. So the numbers that he came up with are not to get us ahead of the game. It's to get us in the game. It's to recover our costs. Yeah. Right. And that was a shock mm -hmm. to me. And you know, our costs are can be very significant because a grinder out here on a nice flat level lot that's easy access is one thing. 
But a grinder out here on a lot that's like this, I'm sure is a whole other bale of wax for these guys to have to put them in. And the cost, I mean, it takes longer, takes more material. Um, I had a question, not one question, but a concern, and maybe you can answer it, about this new Siega development or Siega neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Um, it seems to me we heard our CEO tell us how profitable this was going to be, how much money it was going to bring to the village. But so the money's coming in, but she's not talking about the money going out for the grinders, for the roads, for the sanitary <coughs> lines, for the electrical, what, uh, any utility that has to go in there. We just saw the cost of that last week or the week before, I think. I would like to know A minus B equals C, profit or loss. Can we get that information? I know about that. Um, at least what Stephanie Heffer said at the CIMPAC, CNPAC meeting, was that we got enough from um, the permits that were bought in December to cover all the costs of that. That's what she said. That was the, that goes in line with the presentation that I've seen too. Um, as far as the property owner access to that information, <coughs> I would guess you'd have to go down and and ask for <coughs> and ask for the, and, and and ask to see that. But uh, that was all presented to the board, and the board did see those numbers. And you know, I don't feel like I am. Uh, you know, it's an agreement with a third party, Renaissance Homes, and and I don't feel like it would be appropriate for me to release that. Mm -hmm. But um, um, that was all taken into consideration. So you're, con you're convinced that this is not a losing proposition for the near future. It is a I'm convinced it's not a losing proposition. We wouldn't be doing it if it was a losing proposition. I'm convinced it's not a losing proposition for us at all. We're building a one point X million dollar pool, and that's not paying for itself. What's that's a losing proposition? It didn't open yet. Hmm. Unfortunately, we don't sell very many pools. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm convinced that this neighborhood thing is, that is what Cooper did. That's yeah. how the village got built out, because Cooper went and built this neighborhood, and then they went on further east, and they built another neighborhood, and then they went further east, and they I'm built another. I'm not opposed to it, Diana. I'm yeah, opposed I understand. to not getting the facts. You're opposed to, and, and there again, um, I'm opposed to being fed piecemeal, what, mm -hmm. what, what, not necessarily the board, but whomever chooses to feed us instead yeah. of giving us the reality and the truth. Yeah. Um, black and white. And there could have been a way to do that probably mm -hmm. in terms of the permitting will, will bring generate X dollars of mm -hmm. revenue, the lot sale generated X dollars of revenue, and it's going to cost us X dollars to put in the infrastructure. Because once we've done the infrastructure, we're out of there. Yes. If we were to sell a lot and somebody built a home on it and we got the assessment money for that regularly on a monthly basis, that's not all the money that we get. Absolutely. Because right. those people use the amenities and pay the fees. That's sort of an invisible dollar figure. So it's not just assessment money. That makes a difference. So my question is, Cooper had this idea, I am actually going to build smaller footprint houses. Do we know how many of those he actually sold? Because we think the demand for small... You're talking about the new development yeah. in the Yes. Yeah. He hasn't yeah. sold any so far. Right. So the demand for that you would think we'd see the result. Yeah. Watch well, them. Well, you got it. I think you got a problem out there in the um, monthly fees. Yeah. Fees. Yeah. Okay. 
I think that, that that's the case. Um, there's been some other people in real estate that have commented to me that their the model is too much of a plain Jane. Um, people are looking for a little more upgrades. In comparison, how many Siega homes have been sold? Well, there hasn't been one built yet. At least Cooper has one built that's a model. And, and Renaissance plan is the same thing. They'll build one, sell it, and then build the next one. You're not talking about this like Cooper went in there and you could hear pounding all over the place because they were putting up three, four, five, six houses at the same time because he had that large of a crew building back here in the 80s. You're talking about Renaissance will go in there and they'll build a home in the Ciego subdivision, and they'll sell that and they'll build another one. They'll sell that and they'll build another one. And so you're talking houses, a several year build out on the thing, probably. Those houses are what square footage and what price, do you know? I don't remember. Your uh, square footage is like, I think the 1,600 to square feet. Yeah. And you're still looking at probably $120 a square foot. Well, the one I was in, um, I was in that neighborhood, and one of the neighbors gave me a tour, very nice of him to do that. It was fabulous. Inside. What, in Madeiras? Yes, in yeah. Madeiras. It was absolutely, absolutely fabulous. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's just so I don't know, like I said, I just heard this from a realtor that, that it was too plain vanilla. I thought, I, I mean, the other, the other town, I haven't been in a Madeira's town, uh, Cooper, but I've been um, at the ones that are out by Isabella Golf Course, and, and they're beautiful. I mean, Cooper has always done quality products, so I think the problem is the monthly fee. And see, they're not part of the Townhouse Association. They they pay that fee to a company. I don't know <coughs> if, it's a, if it's a subsidiary of Cooper. I don't know what the arrangement is there, but they it's pay. It's their maintenance company. But I don't know if they're wholly if they own it or don't own it or have a partnership with them. Or I'm sure they got something with them. Well, I'm not just sure. saying I don't know what the relationship status is. And then they're having to pay that, and that's a hundred, hundred eighty dollars a month. Plus, then they've got to pay their POA fee too, which is sixty nine in round numbers. Is it hundred eighty now? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Yeah, it was more. That's about right. I paid one forty five. They just mm -hmm. raised it. I don't know. And that includes. Are you in Madeira? Isabella. She's in Isabella. Oh, Lord. Darius is more. And they just raised because it. Because they got the little companies. And I'm thinking, I asked one of the ladies around the street, and I said, has this been going up all the time? Because, you know, that was a really, uh, it was kind of something I was not prepared for. So, yeah. yes, it was, uh, it was something that I'd have to pay because I want everything taken care of, yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know. I have a question. Um, and this is for Mike. I'm interested in the Leslie Nally contract renewal. Has the board started discussions on this, on renewing her contract, and have, have the criteria or the goals been met by her that would enable a renewal and a bonus and so on and so on. I mean, we're all amongst friends here, aren't we? You know, I'm just asking. This is something that... I haven't discussed it. I don't know where you So the board as a whole is not... We haven't started talking. There's been no discussions. There's been no discussions. Okay. So when will these discussions start? And is she privy to this information? I mean, is she there well, she'd during be part the of the discussion. discussion? So she would be part of the discussion when... I, I, I guess. Well, it depends. Uh, what did you guys do last year? The discussion was offline. I didn't attend a couple of meetings, but they were offline. <coughs> uh, you know, I'm sure the board will have a discussion, but uh, when that's going to be, I don't know yet. We are right now in the goal setting arena, which we. Goal setting? I would have thought the goals would have been set 
a long time before now. <laughs> I mean, I, when I always had a job, they gave me my goals at the beginning of the year and not at the end of the year. Well, we're talking about the goals for 2020 that we're looking at now. Uh, Leslie's contract currently goes through 2020, March of 2021. Yeah. And uh, we, you know, we base those, we base her goals upon the enterprise goals. And we've got them down pretty much. But we keep running, when we've met to talk about them, we keep running out of time to get them in the proper format that we want. We're, we're trying to follow the SMART procedure this year, which is that the goal be specific, and that it be measurable, and that it has accountability, and that it be uh, relevant, and that it be timely. Yay. <laughs> and um, so we just don't have them all in the proper written form yet. When when you start, I mean, even though we're just a board of six, but when you start getting six people trying to reach consensus on each one of these items, it takes more time than what we ever plan the meetings for. And we run out of time and we haven't got it done yet. But we're close. <laughs> the problem with any with the boards is they all come from different environments. They've all got their own ways of doing things in the past. Uh, and it's difficult sometimes to reach consensus on some things. And with the, you know, a third of us basically turning over every year, it's a yeah. new education. It's not like, I mean, okay, when I worked at Caterpillar, I mean, I wrote down, I wrote my goals. And then my boss took a look at it and said, yeah, that looks okay, but I don't think you've stretched far. Maybe, maybe you'd say to me one year, or she would say to me one year, you haven't stretched far enough. You could do that in your sleep. I'd like for you to, to see what you could go above and beyond that, so try again. I so, mean, but that was my experience. So the enterprise goals and, and Leslie Nialy's goals that are currently in place are not smart whatsoever. How is the board going to determine whether what? or not she met those goals? They're not specific, measurable, relevant, time-oriented, or achievable, or what's the A? I can't remember, achievable. Well, I mean, there's nothing there. When we get into happen. that discussion, that, that, that will be, I mean, it'll be interesting. It, it should be very interesting. It should be very interesting. And of course, you know, you, like Mike said, we're all coming at this from different backgrounds, different viewpoints. Um, what we... Is there a chance the goals won't be met and the contract won't be renewed? I have no idea at this point in time, Melinda. I really do not. I mean, I know what my opinion is. Well, but I think we pretty much all know what most opinions are. But <laughs> and I can tell you, I've, I've looked at the people that are going to be on the next board, and I can pretty much tell you what the opinion's going to be. But those people, unfortunately, aren't going to have anything to say about whether or not this contract is renewed. Mm -hmm. Well, according to what I know, what? Well, the contract I mean, is before, up in 2021. Well, yeah, but it can all be added a year. You can add another year on, year year on it. We already know that this, you know, yeah. this well, year's gone. But, According to the contract itself, as to what I understand, when somebody had told me, is that unless it's amended or terminated, there's no reason for a vote on it. It is, it goes on perpetually. It doesn't. Though. No, that, that's, that's, that's been on the internet, and that must that's no, not that's that's, not, that's an urban right. legend. You know, yeah. that's there urban really legend. Such, there's no such thing as a contract that does that. You know, you. It may automatically renew if no one says anything. If we all just sit back and ignore it, I'm sure it will automatically renew. But you can say, we're not renewing your contract for another year. That's not firing her. That's just saying at the end of this contract, you need to find yourself another job, so you need to start working quickly. Well, okay. it could also mean well, you take that a you'll baseball player. discuss a renewal at that time. But but you, you take a baseball player, and the baseball player has a contract for X amount of period of time to play ball for the Chicago Cubs, say. And 
you may say, well, I'd like to have him longer. So I go into negotiations with him and try to extend that contract before it, before it expires. Or you might talk to him just right before it expires. Or you might let it expire. You know, there's just, with contracts, there's all kinds of different ways they can be handled. So will this one, if you do nothing, but unfortunately, if you do nothing, I don't think this one expires. I think this one automatically renews itself, which is something that I, I find agree. really I unusual. But, you know, that's not, I don't have that answer. That, that same understanding, I'm reading my it. reading of it. I didn't know if you had more people you had to go through on your list there or no. No, I'm, I'm oh. open. I'm okay, good. This is talk. a question for the board meeting tomorrow on the agenda. Under new business, it has discussed third party marketing services. What is that pertaining to? And what is that? Is okay. Um, in the past, I think somebody mentioned the name Giadotti. Giadotti used to be a third party company that we right. used to contract with for certain services. And they have put out an RFP, which is a request for proposal. Uh, they sent it out to seven different marketing firms and um, they had three was am I getting this right they had three response three response they had two that said that responded were not interested they had three actual responses that came back and then they had two that didn't no no RSVP <laughs> they didn't respond right. at all and of the three, they went, they being staff, right. went through and um, chose a company. There was some dialogue amongst all three of them back and forth, okay, in this process. And then the staff chose a company that they believe is the best one to go with for this proposal. And there's a lot of technical issues involved here. And that's what I'm asking is, we've got a new marketing director, and what is their, the purpose of this outside source, third marketing? What is, what is their job going to well, be? Well, the best that I, this is for about, uh, what is it, about $84,000? I think it's $84,000. Um, of about a total $325,000 marketing budget. They, um, from what I could tell reading through here, um, and, and, and there was a lot to go through, um, they're going to be doing a lot of the metrics on how you measure the effectiveness of your marketing, which is a key thing to do. You know, is it working? If it's not working, we got to fix it. Um, I would say if you have time tomorrow to come to this and hear this presentation yeah. firsthand versus me trying to paraphrase yeah. it and go through it, because I mean, I've read about, I don't know how many you printed it, I didn't print it, but I mean, there's pages and pages of information regarding this as to what this company's credentials are, what their work experience has been what they expect to be able to, what their deliverables are expected to be. Um, I'm not a marketing expertise. It's so are they going to actually be there tomorrow? No. Okay. No. The presentation no. is going to be Because Leslie's spending authority goes up to 50000 and this contract, I believe, it was either eighty four, eighty six. So she has to get permission board approval, board approval. In order to enter into this contract. And um, so we discuss it tomorrow, and we vote on it in February. Okay. Ideally, we would have had this in place by now for a 2020 marketing plan versus right. eight weeks into a year, yeah. but it's not going to kill us. 
Diane, I'm confused on what you said. Are you telling us that Gadotti has done the RFP on our behalf and sent it out to no, 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 seven? No, no, no. Oh. I'm oh, saying yeah, as you talked about a marketing, we've used Gadotti in the past. Okay. All right. This That's this okay. agency is is sells. Mm -hmm. And it looks to me, I think they're a limited liability corporation. Uh, it looks to me like the um, principal owner of this company, his last name is also Sells. Based upon his timeline with the company, it was started by somebody else with the same last name, father, uncle, cousin, mother. <laughs> They've been in business a long time. They're not in Florida, Florida, are they? No, they're in Little Rock. Okay. That was a joke. Yeah, it was a joke because of Florida marketing. Are they related to Nancy? I don't believe there's any relationship. Okay. I thought I'd tell you that I work for our best bank, and that is the agency we use. There you go. Sales. Mm -hmm. They're our PR agency. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they do all of our advertising because we do big time, big time, big time advertising. But I know they do our PR. Yeah, they do, do all my press TV releases. and stuff too. They, they write all my press releases. Yeah, they've got a an outstanding <coughs> reputation. And like I said, I mean, I, I and read through pages of it of what them. we're expecting them to do and. I mean, we're, we're going to have a marketing program. You're going to have professionals doing it. But with uh, uh, Paul coming on board, some of the stuff that Gadotti used to do will now become in-house responsibility. Gadotti was one of them that said, thanks, but no thanks. We're not interested. Right. I remember that at last board meeting. Yeah, I think that Man, was... uh, Leslie announced that at right. last board meeting. I signed sure up to speak that. about Particular topic. You did. I'm sorry. You've got. You see, you talked about other things. You I know that. Talk about <laughs> got me. Got me. Got me. Got me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, Congress. I want to bring this up because it's relevant. There's a couple of items. One is especially a bylaw that stood out uh, during a conflict when Mr. Garrison left, and I think there needs to be some understanding of that. Okay. And I referenced it from a spirit of. Um, intent and that uh, bylaw is article 7 section 6 it's called removal and it uh, speaks of interfering directly in the management of the association the two words in the bylaw would be considered in my viewpoint uh, elusive deceptive and threatening what do the words in fear interfere directly mean? Does this mean that a director has no right to question any of management's projects under consideration? Or does it mean that at no time should a director question management unless given permission to do so? If you could please clarify, what does interfere directly mean? What my explanation of that has been and my interpretation of that has been as a board member is that I am not to go out and give direction to an employee on how they're supposed to do their job or suggestions on how to do their job or act as a manager in any way, shape, or form. That's how I've always interpreted that. Not, it's not for the board not to question things. Because it is that is our that's our fiduciary responsibility is to question, and um, we've never had any issue with us asking questions of our employee. Now, if we have a question regarding another employee of the association, we we go through our employee to ask that question. Okay, I mean, I, I, uh, I look at it, and if, if something is not clear, then you have to wonder, and that's mm -hmm. why I, I mm -hmm. questioned that, but I submit that this is a... Ambiguous statement? Yes, it's not only ambiguous, but it, it, it points to a clear uh, case of stopping board members from being able to perform their duty of care responsibilities in order to make reasonable determinations needed to act responsibly. Uh, this bylaw, in my estimation, gives management undeniable power over the board, so I respectfully ask that you vote to repeal it. I, I just don't see there's any other way. Uh, my second, uh, and I hope you do that and consider it, 
My second one is the, the talk about the CMP as a governing document. Um, it was promoted first as a great plan, only a guide, a solution for all determinations. It turns out it was a flawed plan that has failed, and we all know and understand that from the many board meetings we have been at and all the discussions that were involved. Um, it, uh, with good intentions, the CMP Advisory Committee, uh, led by the Justice of the Peace and uh, the help of a lawyer, could not even figure it out. The committee is still trying to cut and patch and put it back together. Uh, then suddenly it becomes a governing document. Uh, when did the board vote to place it as a governing document? Please. We voted on that in uh, July, August, somewhere in that time frame. It went, the, it was a recommend, I remember going to the governance committee meeting where that was discussed. We, of course, were not on the, I was not on the governance committee, so I couldn't address the, I couldn't speak at that meeting, but I could listen to what they were saying. And we debated that, and um, it passed by a majority. Um, yeah, it did. Um, I, and I can't, I mean, you know, I was in the minority opinion, so I can't speak to, I, uh, sorry, the, I lost the vote. So what does it actually mean now that it's a governing document? Well, there's, it, there's things in it. First off, the CMP wasn't totally bad. There are some very very good suggestions in it to do with maintenance and some other things we need to do that need to be thought about long term to save us some money. Uh, and and <coughs> those they are working on as well as others. <coughs> I think people got bogged down in the fact that we were going to build a down center right away and uh, that is never, I can honestly tell you as a board member, that was never discussed. Uh, town center was just not anything that we were interested in doing uh, and really uh, wasn't considered at all. But from a maintenance standpoint, <clears throat> there were many good ideas in there that need to be uh, fleshed out and, and, and put together. And I, I don't think anyone would disagree that we need a comprehensive master plan. And I attended the CMP meeting last week and Town center is still being talked about. I mean, you may say it's not going to happen in our lifetime. Maybe not, but why are they even wasting the time on discussing how the traffic flow is going to be around the town center and, gee, we're going to have to get this permission from yeah, this. I understand. I, didn't, I, didn't. I mean, it seems ridiculous. You're wasting all this time on this committee. Let's talk about the infrastructure. Let's talk about bringing in rooftops. Let's find more lots so we can build out a renaissance type builder to build a small scale neighborhood like Cooper did. Why are we talking about a dang town center and golf carts well, for travel? Because mm -hmm. that's new urban. I don't know about it. Uh, I have discussed uh, a medical town center. Uh, I, wouldn't, I didn't call it a town center, but we definitely need more facilities in here uh, for our people. And I would like to see something that you can drive into that has all the different medical issues <coughs> to take care of. I would even like to see a mini hospital. I don't know if that will ever happen. Uh, I would be willing to discuss that. But as far as a town center with the grocery store and all this, I, I'm just... Yeah, but, the, but, but you interested. see, what, what they're pointing out to us, Mike, is that there's a disconnect. Uh, yeah, I know. There's a disconnect between what we believe as board members yeah, that's and what, board what, what, the, what the, the committee board. is presenting. Exactly. In well, their discussion. The other thing, the other part of that, there are parts of the CMP pertaining to maintenance that is very good. It, it at least gives us a starting point and a direction to go. But then there's parts like the town center, like 
uh, for, for travel the, and yeah, the, that the and transportation so, thing that yeah. came up. Why did they not use the CMP committee to take those parts out before they made this a governing document? Correct. Mm -hmm. That's a very valid point. Um, but the, there again, you know, the, this was what the governance committee felt was the proper thing to do. And they brought it before the board, and they got it voted in as a governing document, and so it became a, a governing document. You well, it's a definite disconnect because they are definitely I, 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 pursuing, talking, encouraging, all excited about town center and the traffic flow is going to be such that we will do. You know, we'll have we've eliminated the walking trails because it's not going to happen with the topography that we have here. But we can do golf carts. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that what they talked about? That and new gates. New gates, New gates to, to allow, to allow to easy the traffic center. to the town center. So it's not a passing comment. Mm -hmm. It was a definite discussion. And, the, and it's pretty much been a discussion at each CMP each of the CMP. So there's a definite disconnect, if you want to call it that. Okay. And so I like don't better, know if it's... We, we, we better be prepared to ask our questions tomorrow on the CMP presentation of which will probably be about 10 minutes worth of our board meeting, but uh, um, this, the, Did they include um, the lodge in that? Yeah. <laughs> they did not talk about the lodge in and, those and words, meeting, and they were very tiptoeing around open gates, which is another thing that pisses oh, me off. We, we can't have. We can't have open gates. But that was something they were carefully tiptoeing That takes around. away our safety and our security and takes away one of our yeah, community. It takes away our uniqueness. It, it destroys, I agree. It destroys I agree. The, the SIMPAC committee, the purpose is to advise management on how to implement the CMP. They're not implementing it, but they're advising management on what steps, what order, and they have tools to help them figure these things out. And that is the purpose of the committee. What's the status of the gate lawsuit? No change. No status? No, nothing happening. It's sitting in some, some or several <coughs> lawyers' file cabinets, and nobody's even pushing any paper back and forth right now. Is there any discussion on other venues? Other Find different vendors? Uh, no. No, no talk at all about the gates, turning them into RFID readers. Staff has not brought us one thing in regards to that. You know, I still see people down there trying to get past. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the sign used to be up there that said, go to the next one, or one We're not, this is not yeah. operable, or, or whatever. Caught a cover over it, something so that they don't think that would stop. Cover over it, so that people would realize. Well, mask over it. Well, you know, like like we do like our you plant do a parking meter. Take one of those and you don't plant have covers to put over it. Yeah. Something. Well, the R and B. She canceled you. Yeah. Uh, at each uh, gate. Yes. Just, but it doesn't function, so people stop at that. Some Adair's gardens are one seventy five. One seventy five Adair's gardens on top of the sixty. Wow. Yeah, plus your sixty-nine dollars And so that includes what the little clubhouse, all That's your maintenance, all your outside maintenance, all of your outside maintenance. So you the house no, the yard. Yeah. Uh, so My yard doesn't. Oh, not not washing the, the windows. Yeah. 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 Wash a little windows. blower. <laughs> you know, or wait for the wind to blow tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Like, like it's the group that get together. Yeah, the group, somebody. the group gets together and hires somebody to power wash the outside of their oh. built the the houses. They have a mayor. They have a mayor. Oh, they have a mayor. They have a mayor. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's very cute. R I think it's very cute. But here's the thing. R R gates. Okay. Then R back R on the gates. R Listen up. R uh, yes, no sideways <laughs> conversations here. Um, you said that staff has not brought you anything on getting those operational, correct? Correct. Has the board asked the one employee, apparently, that you can ask? We haven't asked. We haven't. Right. 
the RFID gates. We have a sense about that. trying. I mean, I think the boards. I think our thing is let's get the lawsuit settled, yeah. and then we'll go on. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and you know, who knows? but because there's a lot of money tied up with this uh, ISN company and the counter suit. Well, sure, yeah, but it's hard to finish it. We know. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I couldn't we'll hear you. finish it and be done with it. I still didn't hear you. Why don't they let them come and finish it and be done with it? I assent. Mm -hmm. They can't. They couldn't yeah. make it work. Yeah, I guess they could make it work. Because they've got two different guts from like, another company, and the ISN came in, and the guts don't work with INS, right. ISN. The contract right. was changed midstream. Yeah. Right. Just, it was not a, it just We nice. are a little bit unique with the number of gates we have. Eight. <clears throat> and that can be hard. Well, when you count two at each thing there, I mean, you got the, uh, for electronic, you've got two at the east, <coughs> two at Balboa, and two at Danville. So you get six electronic. Yeah, and then you've got the just gate openings. We yeah, have one at Cortez, and then Balboa, you've got the Cortez. Balboa, east, west, that one out there on, uh, I think it's for employees only. Huh? That's just a goose contractor or yeah. employee yeah. and goose yeah. So you have. But it still has to be. It's still. It you still have to be RFID. So, but I think that takes because there's not. Does Cortez have one or two? Or, or is that just a single game? Yeah. 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 Yes. That's what I thought. So you have seven. Because goose pond is just a single gate too. And most of them have been working just fine for the last 15 years. Well, that's not exactly true because they've had to do work and maintenance and then they set them up that you can now go out the gate without using your card. You used to have to use your card to get out the gate as well as use your card to get in, so they changed that apparatus out. I mean, yes, they do work. No doubt about it. But they have had ongoing maintenance too. You know, I, mean, I can't tell you how much money we spent on the gates because gates. people ran into them. Yeah, well, that's my thing. What kind of gate you have? You're gonna have I come in the Danville gate, and that's amazing that people can't get through that gate without hitting that post. Would the RFI <laughs> change that? No. 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 no, 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 no. You still have the same. You still, still have people. people. You still <laughs> have people that shouldn't be driving. You still have people. There's nothing you can do about that. Trucks that are going to come down that shouldn't come down, and I think you know the signage has helped a little bit with that that the, that the Arkansas Highway Department put out. That has helped a little bit with that. Kirk, oh, you have a question? No, I, well, I was just going to say this. Uh, what part of this agreement do you not understand? Here it says this agreement and all its terms and conditions will automatically renew with the same terms, if not otherwise amended or terminated accordingly by written notice. That's Leslie's contract. You're talking about Leslie's contract. Yeah. Well, so it does automatically Yeah, but if we're, the, the, the board is not a bunch of morons that oh, we're not I, know. Just I'm just make, I was just making a statement. I don't expect y'all. I think that that is just general employee contractual language, but the board is not going to not discuss this every year. Surely they're not going to be early. <laughs> and when you Surely. discuss that, Surely. You, we're sure. <laughs> and when you discuss her contract, that's when you discuss her bonuses, too. That's my understanding. That's so she hasn't been through this yet. The employee evaluation. <laughs> Done last year. Before. It was done before I got on the board, so this will be my first. My first shot at it. Thank you for coming out. Okay, be careful with the fog. May I ask one quick question? You may. Who is the board liaison to the restaurants? <coughs> we don't have a board. You don't liaison. have one to food and okay. beverage. No, nope. don't have one to food and beverage. I was strictly handled by staff. Is there a reason? No board oversight. <clears throat> well, the CMEO, when she came in, she started really, she was really doing a good job on, okay, let's cut some costs here by combining. Why are we not yeah. buying products like this and saving oh, money this way and that kind of thing, which should have been done by whoever's in charge of food and beverage, just my personal mm -hmm. opinion. 
but she came in and she did make some changes that really made a difference. And that's not, I'm not saying I'm for or against the CMEO, I really don't know her, but I do know that was a big help. Mm -hmm. And made Which total sense. Which sounds like a great idea. Yeah, it made total it, sense. It is good. Yeah. So it's, she did a good job on that, so. I never have liked the food and beverage. And you both. hate being in that business. Well. It's just not, it's not an easy one to make. If, you, if I play a golf course during the day, the last thing I'm going to want to do is go back to the same place at night and eat. That's just me. But these kitchens, most of these golf courses were just too small. They yeah. built them to be grills. That's all they did. They didn't build them to be full service right. kitchens. And every time we got a new vendor in the past, you got to spend money to change the kitchen around or not or try to get, you know. I mean, they should I, just be a grill type thing and just have a couple big restaurants. I mean, we're subsidizing them so much. It's still, you know, you got to think, I mean, right now we're a community of about 15, I mean, in round numbers, we're about 15,000 people. Now, you can go all across America and find towns of 15,000 people, and how many restaurants can 15,000 people truly support and maintain the profitability? And the other thing that you take into consideration when you take it in, think about the POA run restaurants, Granada, DeSoto, in particular, every person that you have working on there is on the clock, so to speak. I mean, they could be management payroll or whatever, right. but they're on the payroll. Versus a restaurant that the POA does not run, that holder of that lease is providing a bunch of the labor. So it affects profitability in a different way. Right. It's almost like they fight each other, in my opinion. I mean, it's kind of well. There's only so much. There's only so many dollars available for people to go out to dinner. Exactly. And or to go out to eat. I should say that, not to go out to dinner, but to go out to eat. And they all have a very difficult time in the months of January, February, and into March. Um, I don't like to go out at night. It's dark here. <laughs> Very what dark. makes it night. Fun. That's what makes it night. That's what makes it. I mean, yeah, exactly. But in the summertime, it's still daylight during dinner time. You know, late well, like, uh, at seven o'clock at night. Yeah, so it's pretty much dark. <laughs> yeah, it is for you. I mean, there, there's only so many. But that's why the packages are so important. The golf packages, the guys, I mean, and I say guys because it's primarily groups of men that come on the golf packages. You get a few groups of ladies that come uh, on the golf packages, but it is primarily groups of men, and they bring us, a, I mean, that's the night, you know, not only do we get the revenue from them for playing golf, renting the golf carts, and that kind of thing, but they, they usually eat. play 36 they holes and a day, that and they eat and they drink here, too. Yeah. Um, you know, so, and the discovery packages, uh, some of those people eat here, some of those people go into hot springs. Well, that's the problem. <clears throat> we can't draw people from the outside. Well, what are you going to do when they open the hotel? At, I mean, is there downtown? The race track, track. Oh, race well, I don't think that will. I think we need to get a bus, we, get the wives and the kids on that bus, and bring their little butts on out here. We have and an agreement with Oklahoma. We signed an agreement with them for a lot of different things. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we are continually life. working on our relationship with Oklahoma. That could be. You can bring could people be. in to do kayaking. You've got yeah. pickleball courts. Kids love to learn new sports. Pickleball is a great thing to teach them. I can't do it, but they could. Yeah. Well, there's just a lot of people. I'm on one if I get on the court. Yeah. <laughs> the wasn't built in a day. That's a yeah. new goal. Another goal. Yeah. 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 But that's the that that is one of the goals, I believe. Oh, good. Increasing the relationship. 
selling like crazy. I've got friends that are realtors over there and just having this as an alternative mm -hmm. would help immensely. And our, our actually if you, I don't understand this because I don't understand the real estate business to this degree, but uh, we actually don't have enough inventory right now. That's a good thing. We only have hundred and some odd houses. Ninety-two, I think. I read that earlier today. Um, the problem is, out of those other ninety-two, maybe half of them are, you know, need, it just... They might not be desirable. Exactly, right. because they're old. I mean, we looked at some houses and... And walked in and said, no, thank you. All the lives I walked in wanted to say, okay, I can do this, give me the money, and I'll gut it. <laughs> I am, well, I am encouraged, because there have been people buying at the West End that have put money into them to redo the I mean, you really kitchen. should because there's a lot of houses on the market that are not high priced. They could be easily renovated, and a lot of them are small at the West End. Mm -hmm. They're not real big. That's right. Or you could convert that carport into yeah, a There's a new business for us anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You you, there, there's, there's money to be made here. There's no doubt about it. There's money to be made here. And that's a whole, that's a bad well, and, and us being a gated community too, Hot Springs, and my husband and I looked in Hot Springs. We didn't feel safe in, there. If that city, and no, I know no. I go to Hot Springs at least twice a week, I work with Guardian Angels on Hobson <coughs> Avenue, that's a whole other world over there. Yeah, it is. That's and scary. It's scary. Yeah, very and scary. When you drive around in these areas and you see how much there is in Hot Springs, it's a scary situation. It was, mm -hmm. That was the reason that I one of the reasons and we have that I stopped being on a court appointed like special yeah. applicant for children because going in there at night I felt like I needed to be packed. Well, I mean, yeah. I went to shelter sometime yeah. by myself and go out and pitch butt, but I grew up in Dallas and Houston. But anyway, we have friends that live on Lake Hamilton and they can't put anything in their boat. They'll, if, if it's, it's not nailed down, it's gone. It's just unbelievable. It's just sad. Mm -hmm. I think it's unique that, that we have a <coughs> policeman from Hot Springs living in the village. We've got an awful lot of school teachers living mm -hmm. And we have a lot of school teachers that live in the village. But you know, it's, and, and I'm not, I mean, I don't know how well the gates work or don't work, but it is a selling feature. Oh, well, they, sure. work, they work just fine. And what we were trying to do was so that it would, Using the micro fish or whatever you want to call it. I mean, if they would open automatically if they read your thing in the car. You would have a little tag, you know, a little thing. Right, it would be in your windshield. You know, right. there were some just... nice features with it that if it would have worked the way it was envisioned, that I could go here and, and put in that Johnny and Susie are coming. Well, we have friends that do that. We, 
in the hill country. Yeah. yeah. Actually, going out the gates, putting, you know, driving up and being letting the gate open, that has done a tremendous. Well, we used to have a backup at Bell, oh, yeah. that was unbelievable. I mean, I go out to Danville, get a constable. Our RFID would make it twice as fast, though. Yeah. I mean, You're people right. stopping to get their card in the right place on the right machine. Well, yeah, yeah. but the, the day can only go, I mean, yeah. so yeah. Fast. Fast. there's only so much speed you can, you you can get One of these up and down is way better. Yeah, yeah. and I'm not, I'm... Up and down, down one gate, just a, a, yeah. a, a barricade, it goes up, you drive it's through, it goes down. Just an and it's made out, made out of rubber. Well, it's no, 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 that is isn't secure enough. We did. Our daughter's the neighborhood, they just ran those. They those just run those all the time in a lot of neighborhoods. And you're always, you're constantly replacing them. They want, I mean, it doesn't tear up their car bad enough for them to knock the thing down. Or a truck. They can have their truck. They can, you can have one of those cattle catchers on the front of your truck, and that, that won't, it, you won't do any damage to it running through that. Well, that's illegal going through it with one of those. But. Well, it's illegal. It's yeah. illegal to, to, to break, to break yes, into somebody's yes. house, too, but people do it all the time. <laughs> You know, but, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, we have a lot of opportunities facing us. We have a lot of challenges facing us. But we're going to come out the other side of this thing. Yeah. We are. Just from the top. Pick up. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we do have a lot of challenges, but some of those we made the differences I mean, on it. I was very happy to see power station in the last storm we had. Yeah, and because of the fact of the improvements that, we made. I mean, the biggest power out of used to come to the energy customers. I mean, that was always the thing. Well, do you have energy or do you have first electric? Oh, you don't want a house with energy. You're going to lose your power all the time. Well, we have, that's what we've had. Back in the day, you used to experience a lot, but energy has come in here yeah. and made a lot of improvements, and, and, we'll make one more. and they're going to make one more uh, power station for us. And they also keep their trees trimmed. Yeah, they're they're keep keep you go to trimmed, California, and that's 90% of their problem. Most their trees lines. are never trimmed. Um, so, that, so that's a good thing. I know. Man, it's a it's great bad. thing that we got all these, that, that, that our public works group got all of our lift stations up and running and going smooth. I mean, that was something, a hurdle that we just, we, you know, we, we just couldn't ever get over it. We got that done. We started on the culvert repair. Um, water treatment plant. Oh, the wastewater treatment plant. We put the bids out. For the that we put the bids out. I think this is in his report tomorrow yeah. for for the wastewater treatment plant as well as um, motors at yeah. Lake Lago that will affect and, and the pumping Mill Creek, station and Mill, Mill Creek. We he's done that. Um, I mean they have replaced. I can't remember now from without going in back and looking at the report where the big culvert job was that they uh, had the Durango. pictures of. Durango? Or du what was the name of the street? Yeah, uh, Durango Bob. She made her on Okay, on Durango. I mean, we're talking some really big culverts that they've got to fix. The road's back to being fixed. Everything is. <coughs> Well, it was a Bar Durango. That was Barcelona. A Barcelona, it was one that, yeah. at the, on the day of the employee Christmas party, mm -hmm. I was headed over here for that, and I see it, well, I had another errand to do up out the West Gate before I came here, and I went out the West Gate, and I see a truck coming down Barcelona with this big old metal culvert all beat up and bent up because they had loaded onto the truck. And they had that. They came to that Christmas party and they got that job done. And those guys, I mean, basically, Jason let them hang out at that party for quite a bit of time that day. But they, you know, that was a big deal for them. We and called them on a leak. On a, well, we emailed them on a Sunday night. They were there seven thirty Monday morning fixing. Right, it. right. And I and had they had it fixed at the end of the day. You know, we we've got it. We've got some really really top notch people working for us. We really, really do, and um, 
um, we're making some headway on these things. <clears throat> we are like, ah, these people working here, most of them came from around here. And the reason I am very, so very high on the workforce we have is I don't know what they'd be doing in life if it wasn't for Hot Springs. That's for sure. Yes. And, and so I give them a lot of credit well, we're talking for about what they more, have learned the and what they can do. We we're talking about the Indians and not the chiefs. Mm -hmm. that you're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Trust me, there's no love lost between the Indians and the chiefs. Because I've spoken to a lot of Indians in my life. <laughs> <laughs> packages with the swell brochure and their assessments and what they're supposed to do next. Well, I haven't. I've heard of a few other new folks who haven't. I've heard of some people who have lived here quite a while who haven't gotten those. And I called the POA and found out that you're not going to try to sock me with a late charge until February. What's the problem here? <laughs> I don't send you a no, they, well, they you should have got a packet in the mail. No, I didn't. In a letter. No, she didn't. I didn't. That's what I'm saying. And I'm not the only one. It should have come in December. No, I didn't get mine until. Yeah, I didn't get mine until January this month. But you could go into the POA at any time, and, and they will correct that for call. you. I called them. They told me that there was problem with the printer and after I hung up and got to thinking about it I thought this is a little weird because I was told that there was a problem with the printer and they apparently sent the packages to the old owner in some cases not the new owners mm. and I went mm. uh, that doesn't sound right at any rate uh, well, it could be if they use the wrong names Mm -hmm. uh, That's pretty unprofessional. Well, <laughs> believe me, we're in the Stone Age as far as data processing. All right, I, I, information technology. Uh, well, maybe that's something. Yeah, that you, you, you need to, you you just need to go in and tell them that you want the package. They'll give it to you. You can fill it out right there. I have moment. a life. Oh, <laughs> I'm well, trying well. to live. <laughs> <laughs> and the POA and, this time of year is. Yeah, that, well, yeah, it's just there. Yeah. <laughs> so she knows firsthand what it's like. But we own a lot and a home, and we haven't gotten anything. Now, our assessment is drafted. Does that make a difference? Your assessment is what? Drafted. Drafted. It's an automatic draft. Right. 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 from our bank account. You got to put in your thing for your parking stickers. I mean, not your yeah. parking, your, your car stickers. We'll ask about it. Yeah, I, I think it needs to be asked about because <clears> I've heard of new owners as well you as mean owners like a who have been. Pack? No, no. no. The, the thing is, oh, it's down to you that says for your renewal oh. over the year. Yes. You know, do you want oh. this amenity, this amenity, da da da, oh, right, da right. or where are your cars for your, for your <laughs> stickers? Two stickers. Yeah, two I stickers. But you can also go online and fill all that out on the hey, POA yeah, website. Yeah, right, and I don't have that hours. Yeah, not being blind, you know, not being able to get in there. I barely know how to turn the computer yeah, on. Yeah, it should yeah. have been made. And I'm blind. So. And, you know, for somebody that used to work in there, yeah. Yeah, she knows the routine. Yeah. 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 Now, I, the, the thing about it is, I can't go in and do it anymore because I've lost. You're not 
lot, there's a lot of people that are in your same boat that are paddling on the same stream. Yeah, they're still around. And they only drive in the village, right? They yeah. only drive in the village. Or out the west gate. Seldom we do. I say you go out the west gate. You know, they still got to make the Walmart yeah, well, you check in to, uh, to uh, yeah. Yeah. I want to thank you guys all for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let us know if you have problems filling out your census forms so we can make sure we get people to help you fill out your census. Because the census is very much Hang in there. One thing that we're doing is the census.